looked out for Stalwart. The White March rises up in the distance, stretching to the north and south as far as the eye can see. It beckons to you with peaks like broken fingers. The road thins to a tattered ribbon, and the shadow of the mountains falls across your path. You've barely begun your climb when the darkening sky pummels you with hailstones and turns the ground beneath you to ice. You press on. The air grows thin, and the treacherous mountain passes funnel screeching winds past your ears. A blizzard forces you to make camp for three days, huddling for safety while snow piles around your refuge. At last the weather clears, and you approach Stalwart under a crisp blue sky. There's a noise, high and sharp, coming from the village that sounds at first like another frozen gale. But when you top the rise and reach the village's wooden gates, you see what lies beyond them. It's Darzir! With a whole pack of them! We can take these bastards! Brave Darzir! Stand together! Stand together! Get him! Look out! More of them by the fishery! Brave! house is burning! Hurry! They're both in there! Help! The hut's coming down!
You did it! This you saved them both! This hollow. More memory than substance. They've destroyed the stockade, Mother! It's... Enough. They're gone. The Deliverer of Cadnua. Thank you for making the journey. Abidan knows it's a long one. <sighs> well, I'm sure you wagered on a more civilized welcome. Still, we're much obliged for your capable intervention. Then perhaps you can help us find something. Stalwart isn't much more than a grease stain on a map. What roads we've got in the White March are basically tracks in the snow. And for every traitor or adventurer that comes through, three of our own leave for good. But it weren't always so. There was a time when kings and queens sent their firstborn to these mountains, when the White March was the envy of empires. The Pargrin Dwarves transformed the White March once. We could bring some of that greatness back to Stalwart. But we need the White Forge. Then you'll know that no one's felt as much as a summery breeze from the White Forge for over 200 years. I'm hoping you can do something about that. We've been trying to breach Durgan's battery for over a year now. Problem is, the other expeditions can't so much as dent the front door. A dozen different groups have come through at our request, and several more besides. Been hoping that one of them could clear the way through Durgan's battery. But young or old, green or seasoned, it don't seem to matter. They cast their spells, chisel at the door, and search the grounds until they've worn new treads into the old stone. The lucky ones eventually go home. Plenty more find themselves on the wrong side of a blizzard, or an ogre raiding party. We're an old mining town. Or we were until the Adirans pulled out and left us with a half-dug mineshaft and something resembling an inn. Since then, it's been a steady decline. You've seen the roads. Isn't much we can produce that the Valians can't ship cheaper. But the White Forge... Well, if we could fire it up again and start producing Durgan steel or something close to it... Wouldn't matter if we're in the White March or the Living Lands. Business would come. That's the long and short of it. We're laborers and fisherfolk, not adventurers. But Durgan Steel could put Stalwart on the map again. Open up the mines, bring in new business. We just need the White Forge. Because you can shave stone with it, cleave cast iron in two. And the stuff's as rare as it is remarkable. If we could make something even half as good, we'd have a market at our doorstep and work enough for all of Stalwart. <laughs> Where should I start? Ogres, blizzards, or sheer damned inaccessibility? It ain't for lack of trying, I'll tell you that much. Got untold riches in Durgan steel lying just inside, and never mind the White Forge itself. The Adirans who first settled Stalwart tried to crack it. So did the Valians, and every other cocky adventurer with more metal than sense. But the place has a funny way of sealing itself up. Front door stays shut, the tower entrances are clogged with rubble, and it's been impossible to blast a way in. It don't bear dwelling on, there's too many superstitions about that place as it is. Killed each other off, or so the old books say. Plenty of tales to go around, but none of them open the battery. And the last thing people need is another reason to fear the place. Whatever it was, the other Pargrin dwarven settlements in the White March, 
Bone Picker, the Hawk, and the rest, emptied out not long after, moved to gentler, greener lands. Had the right idea, if you ask me. Finally, someone talking sense. Durgan Steel wasn't just good. It was some of the best. We need the best if we're going to keep Stalwart alive. No one alive today has seen the White Forge, but the old stories tell that it was powerful, glowed white hot and gave off a steady, even heat, unlike any other furnace. Let better schooled folk puzzle over how the thing was built. I just want to see it put to use. Pargrin's a word in their language. Means traveler. They've been wanderers for generations, but I couldn't tell you much more. The battery's up the mountain to the north, a good hike away. Near Galvino's place, huh? So it is. Though I was going to suggest dealing with that ogre camp before anything. Mestre Galvino, as the old crosspatch prefers it, lives by himself and keeps the wilder and beasts at bay through sheer foulness of his temper. She means to say he's a skilled smith and animancer, who's lived in the shadow of Durgan's battery for over a decade. And he butters his bread on both sides and fits his left shoe before his right, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Me and the rest of the town. He knows better than to linger at our gates. Old lunatic finally went too far, and we sent word to the Valian Academies. I don't like speaking on it, but if you want to get his guff, just remind him that we gave him the boot. Ain't nobody here fond of the man, but he's a clever hand and a quick study. It's a fool who thinks he stayed so close to the battery without figuring something about it. You said as much to the last party, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of him since. Maybe they didn't run afoul of Baragon's ogres after all. Just watch your step. Galvino's place is a ways east of the battery, and folk who pass it bring unsettling tales. Belongs to flames that whisper. Matron Baragon's clan. Hunters tell me they've been active of late. Hunting elk and otherwise minding their own damn business. Minding their own business. Never mind the latest expedition's disappearance or the broken stockade. I'm saying we shouldn't agitate them further. The brawl outside was just the latest patch of trouble. The ogre clans are getting bolder, and we'll all sleep easier knowing they aren't circling our walls. Also, Baragons like to have whatever the last expedition found. Rumor has it they disappeared near her turf. Killing a matron will only make our problems worse. The way to approach Baragon is with your hands held high. <sighs> if anyone could parlay with an ogre, I suppose it'd be you. But they aren't known for their patience with prattle. Good. Before you leave town, stop by the grave's rest. Most visitors to Stalwart spend some time there, so Hafric and his patrons may be able to give you the lay of the land. What's on your mind? They didn't volunteer much, and I knew better than to ask. I've seen all types charging through here. Professional companies with shiny new equipment as brazen as you please, and hopeless runs with nothing but tattered leathers. But these folk, I don't know what they were after, and the way they looked at you made you feel cold all over. Wish I could tell you more. What's on your mind? About the only thing folk here haven't tried. Killing one more matron won't change things for long. Besides, her clan's flames that whisper. The one that attacked us was Wolf with many mouths. I'd know him anywhere. They're cut from the same cloth, Aldric. Only a matter of time before Baragon marches through that gap in our walls. Mother's convinced that a magic forge will turn this frozen crack into a hub of civilization. She can't accept this place is dying. Give up on what? There's nothing here. I'm a carpenter. Mother's a builder. So it felt like a good fit at the time. Not that we've got a lot of new folk to build houses and furnishings for. These days, I spend most of my time fixing up the stockade. 
It's a fool's hope. A fantasy that's kept these parts inhabited longer than they should be. They say the Pargrunin dwarves developed Durgan steel, became powerful rich. And then one day, they locked their doors and died. Nothing like a mystery to stir folk up. Most of Stalwart is convinced that some Pargrin secret will save us all. But that don't stop them from whispering a prayer when they pass the old fortress. in a flash after the fighting died down. Most people don't stick around after they figure out the ogres are making regular visits. I would have helped fight them monsters off, you know, if I didn't think I'd just get in the way. And with you there to handle things, uh, everything turned out well enough, didn't it? Don't see why Havrick's still sour at me. Oh, Havrick's the innkeeper over at the Grave's Rest. I may have been hiding in the inn when the fighting started. The raid didn't improve his disposition any. Did you know he has a whole case of Fenlin liquor in there? I keep offering to buy it off him, but he says he's saving it up for when the batteries open again. As if we're gonna last that long. <laughs> Anyhow, he said he'd thrash me up and down the mountain if I didn't leave him be. It's delusional is what it is. Hey, look, maybe... Uh, not that you have the face for it or anything, but maybe you could help me out. Averick keeps all the good stock in the inn cellar. Out of sight, you see. I mean, it's bound to be under lock and key, but I'm sure he wouldn't miss a single bottle. Not with everything that's going on. Shh, all right, keep it down. I didn't mean anything by it. But if you happen to come across some, and maybe you could share? Hey, I'm gonna wait by that fire there while you do that thing with the battery. On that Orland, make sure he don't steal nothing. Never seen such a bloodbath. Feels like we got half the town survivors in here just drinking to forget it. But you must be looking for some refreshment, too, after the way you handled them ogres. Or perhaps a room. Say the word and I'll give that shifty little Orlin the boot. Showed up a few days ago, sticks his nose out of the back room just long enough to empty his chamber pot. Up to no good, I tell you. I'd like nothing more than to see him gone, but I don't want to ruckus over it. We get our share of lowlifes coming through here. Smugglers, fugitives. Kith looking to avoid the sharp eye of the law. The way he's keeping to himself. 
Well, honest Kit sure don't have cause for it. Don't hurt him or anything. I just want him to leave peacefully. Given your history, I thought I'd be clear on that point. Back to warm your hands, eh? What can I do for you? He did, did he? That shifty little crook never learns. I'll have it put away somewhere safe. Thank you for doing the decent thing. Here, for your honesty. I'd found shelter when I stumbled across this little village. Guessing you did too, huh? As much blood as there was in the streets, I'm lucky the ale's still flowing. Thought all the whispers about Durgan's battery were just village superstition. And maybe they are, but I might have been on my guard if I'd listened. I was part of an expedition hunting for relics from Durgan's battery. He picked up a good haul, too. So it figures that's when the winds pick up and the sky starts dumping snow. We lost sight of the road. Meanwhile, something else found us. Took Lena out before we even realized we were surrounded. And then we see him coming out of the snow. These little four-armed wilder. Lagufoth, they're called. Quick little bastards. Francesca and I held them off as long as we could, but when they filled her full of darts, I turned tail and ran. Found my way here and thank my luck for escaping the Logothoth. Then come to find out that this town's got an ogre problem. That's a kind sentiment. I'll mourn them when I get home. But I've got to retrieve our hall if I'm to have any hope of that. I need to get those artifacts. Not that I'm in any shape to go after them myself. But I can't afford to return to Defiance Bay without something to show for my expedition. But you've got your own expedition to the Battery, don't you? While you're out there, maybe you could look for my goods. Whatever's left of them. I'll give you a cut for anything you bring back, of course. I ain't asking for charity. I just can't afford to go home empty-handed. Like I said, we were treasure hunting near Durgan's Battery when we were ambushed. What else do you want to know? Who? No, that would have been somebody else. We didn't meet with Ren and Guild, or anyone else in town for that matter. We were operating on our own. Just that it's been locked up tight for 200 years on account of those dwarves having a row. Which means that any trinkets from inside fetch a nice price. Sorry, I'm more of a businesswoman than a historian. What's left of it should be near Durgan's battery. If you stumble across the Lagufoth, you'll know you're close. Not to be rude, but I'm rather busy. Can't you get another room? He... what? Oh no. No. Is she there? Did you see her? Devola. That woman. The slaver, she. I was a slave in Raid Ceres. I ran away. Made it here. The mountains are usually the best place to lose slavers. But 
Duval as one of the best. I just want to get out of here. I've scraped together enough money to reach New Heomar. But the locals talk about a raid Saren party, camped west of town. It's got to be Divala. She's been after me since the foothills. I'll pay you if you can get rid of her. I don't care how. Thank you. But be careful. She wouldn't have come alone. Those nasty brutes finally left. I heard the ogres outside, tearing down walls and murdering folk. Don't remember how things got this bad. But you're the new adventurer. Renengild's latest volunteer. <laughs> A real spitfire, she told me. Bet you'd whip those layabouts at the mine into shape. Did you say something, dear? Me? I was the overseer at the mine, back when it was running. Got shut down decades ago when we couldn't sell or ship the stuff. But I still remember plenty about the mining business. And I got as many folk as I can digging out the entrance. Been praying to the salty wench that I don't forget too much before they finish the job. Got to speak up? My hearing ain't what it was. locating divination tool. Well, that's what it will be. I have to calibrate it. Right now it seems to think you're a copper deposit. My Animancer contacts did suggest that a particular strong soul essence might interfere. I'm more interested in minerals in any case. I suppose that's possible. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, unfortunately. I'm trying to recreate the instruments that first led the Pargrin dwarves to this mountain. This is my latest prototype. Centuries ago, dwarves carrying tools just like this one followed their readings to what is now the battery. If I can recreate their work, then I may be able to find ore deposits elsewhere. I was hoping to test it, but my arrival was delayed by word of the ogre attack. I haven't been able to find anyone to venture up the mountain since. Really? That'd be wonderful! I, I just have to adjust the device, you see. It should point you toward metal deposits. We already know the battery rests on some rich veins, but I was hoping to get a reading of the surrounding mountainside. If you can follow the readings to ore and bring back a sample, I can use it to refine the device. Thanks ever so much for this!
That's what I get for asking directions in the middle of nowhere. Say, I don't suppose you've seen any mysterious old buildings in the mountains lately, have you? No, but I've heard that name a lot around here. I'm looking for the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. It's an obscure temple dedicated to Andra. I'm a gift bearer. My job is to gather tokens of things people want forgotten and surrender them to the Lady of Lament. Best place to do that is the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. Well, you throw some things into the sea and maybe they wash up on shore one day. But you want something really good and forgotten, you take it to the Abbey. The Abbey's all about forgetting. Wouldn't be much forgetting if I told you about it, would there? Anything that represents a moment or a memory someone wishes to leave behind. Well, love notes, awkward family heirlooms, bad poetry, the kinds of things you want to forget. I might be here a while. Half the villagers have never heard of the Abbey, and the ones that have, no one knows where it is. So I'm trying to think of this as an extended holiday in a remote mining village that smells like fish. You won't regret it. I've got a lovely singing voice. And the company's welcome. Effigy's eyes! It looks at me! You must forgive, Zawa. I was not expecting you. Resting my eyes, I thought. Waiting for the Malkachoa to bring me insight. It would seem I dozed. A good thing my master was not alive to see it. Are you... Are you real? Of course. I meant no offense, but I find it is best to ask when Malkachoa is involved. A small white mushroom. I have heard it called Snowcap in these lands. It can reveal the true nature of many things. A teacher, not an owner. Zawa is a free man. Well, as free as any of us. I was freeing myself from vanity. Consider, how can one be vain who is bathed in the smell of dead fish? I had the idea when I passed this way earlier. I am pleased with the results so far. Yes, quite pleased. From battle, yes. I left them upon my enemies. These were struck against fear. These against pleasure. These against hatred. Those down there against greed and doubt. And these, these were for vanity. I cannot take credit for all of them, but I did most of the good ones. I put them there in battle to remind myself what is real and what is not. Our worst enemies are inventions of the mind, pleasure, fear. When we see them for what they are, we become unstoppable. I feel I have been close, but never for more than an instant. In the moment when the pain is sharpest, 
the world becomes clear. In that moment, I am a match for anyone. Of course, I am fortunate to have suffered so much. If I did not suffer, I would not aspire to free myself from it. I would wander from one unfulfilling goal to the next. More wealth, a better station. My soul would wither. But to search for a place beyond suffering's reach is to nurture the soul. To harden it against the elements. Suffering is the greatest gift the gods have given us. Their most beautiful, perfect creation. It is the hand that turns the wheel. <laughs> gods, no. What a way to travel the world. The usual way is to smear yourself with the ashes of the dead. But they do not burn their dead here. So I have to make do with what the land provides. Hmm. The cold seems to conquer the smell. Even now, the scent hides itself. I was visiting a monastery not far from here. I found it empty, but I met a messenger as I left. He carried a call for aid. Seeing that he would find no monks at the monastery, I chose to go in their place. Zawa is no longer young. But in combat, he is still the greatest of the Takan people. It seemed only right that he should go. I would not say I am hired. I seek no wage, and I promise no result. I have chosen a path, and my spoils come from walking it. And this fortress, this Durgan's battery, its people are gone. Zawa would know why. If one wishes to swim, it is no time to argue with the current. We are here together in this moment because a perfect force has willed it. Who is Zawa to argue? I will walk with you so long as the gods wish it so. Now we can all free ourselves from vanity. Back to work, everyone. No time for dallying. A fine thing you reached us when you did. It would have burned the fishery next, mark my words. And the last thing this lot needs is another excuse to knock off early. Anyway, excuse a mess. If there's something you need, the clerk can get you sorted. Just watch your step if you have a mind to look around. The floors are slick and none too pleasant to fall on. Been running it four decades now. I reckon I can tell you what you want to know. It may stink of fish guts, but there's no place more critical to Stalworth's survival. Herds come and go, so there's seasons when our catch sustains the village. But try telling these folk as much. We go home each day covered to the elbows in fish oil and entrails, reeking of our work. Stalworth's shrinking, but it would disappear if we lost the fishers. I drive them hard, but I can't afford to do otherwise. Just about everything. I track the day's catches and see that our nets and hooks are in working order. My family's been in charge of the fishery since the early days of Stalwart. I know the best spots to find Frost Dive or an Iron Tooth Pike, and I make sure we don't overfish the Speckleback. Need anything else? Be soon. Two days, no more. Mm, sorry. Didn't hear you come in. My ears aren't what they used to be. I'm Thiersh. I've lived here long enough that Kith have started calling me the Old Hunter. And that's about all I can say for myself. Wasn't the ogres, I can tell you that. Put a few arrows in one of those, and they generally have the good sense to back off. But, I've been hunting this wolf for near a year now. A man-eater. Cunning, nasty thing. Every time I get close, it just slips away. The beast has already claimed many lives. 
The first victim was my son, Saldron. Got the better of me this last time. Distracted me long enough for one of its kin to turn up. <laughs> Nearly bit me clean in half. I'm a few weeks out from trying again. No ordinary wolf. A monster. This creature is big. And I see the signs it leaves behind. The mess it made to the last couple of hunters and the elk. Doesn't always finish its meals. Damn thing might be sick. Might have a bullet in its jaw. Something. In any case, it needs to be put down. It roams the russet wood out to the west. Seems to have decided the lake is a good place to find prey. Yeah. It's picked off some scattered ogres from time to time. But mostly it's been going after hunters. Travelers. It needs doing, but I warn you, this beast is not to be trifled with. It must make its lair somewhere to the west. If you mean to go there, keep your wits about you. Watch yourself on the mountain. In these lean times, everything looks like prey to something. Coming to your elders for advice, is it? What can I do for you? It has. We had some hope in the early days that we'd be spared, isolated as we are. That hope died in a hurry. Not everyone's been so unlucky, of course. You'll see a few pampered sprats around. We don't have much ice on the south coast. Maybe you should go first. Yes?
on these roads, and the few we do are hunters, woodcutters, or smugglers. And here I was, thinking we'd found the last pleasant company on the road. I'm after him, all right. He's going to answer for his crimes in Raid Ceres, and one way or another, you're going to stay out of my way. Didn't tell you that part, did he? First off, he chose his indentureship. Had to make up for some bad luck at cards, I hear. More importantly, he murdered his master's son, 13-year-old boy. Killed him as he fled. You want to help me bring him to justice? Run on back and tell him you dealt with us. When he ducks out of town, we'll be waiting. His master's paying well for his return, and I'll see that you're given a fair cut. His master sees it differently. Shame we couldn't do business. Great. Stand! Stand together! What have I, oh. oh, sorry. I must have been dreaming. No, it's nothing. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have bothered you. You told me about your awakening. I guess I've had a similar problem. There's something I remember from a former life. Happened hundreds of years ago, but I remember it like it was yesterday. Happened while I was fighting in Old Valia 20 years ago. My unit was camped out in the palace we'd just taken. The others were roasting the last of the Marchesos pigs in the feast hall. So I went to the wine cellars to fetch a few bottles. I don't know how long she'd been hiding there, but there was this old woman. Must have been one of the servants. She had this wild look in her eyes. I approached her and tried to tell her not to be afraid, that she was safe. She screamed and grabbed my arm. It felt like someone had hit me in the back of my head. I blacked out for a few minutes, and when I came to, she was gone. I took a few bottles up with me, feasted with the rest of the troops. But when I went to bunk, I had a dream. Only it was more vivid than any dream I've ever had. I tasted the sweat on my lips, felt the jungle air on my skin, heard the cries. I asked the other troops. None of them had seen her. Anyway, I laid off the drink for several days, but I kept having the dream. After a few weeks, I, I thought it change of scenery might do me good. Since then, I've been a pirate in the Deadfire, a pilgrim in the White that wins, an adventurer in the Living Lands, and a gift bearer in a Shamadal. There's a pool there, the Salt Well. It's where gift bearers leave the heaviest burdens. It's said that a person can enter it and leave their own memories behind. <laughs> At this point, I'd gladly give up all my memories if that's what it takes for peace in this life and the next. That's the plan.
Did you think to escape me by climbing a mountain? I would have tracked you across the sea, thief. Please, Master, have mercy. I, I kept the grimoire hidden safely away, and I can take you to it. The book is nothing. If you had studied a little longer, you might have learned that. But no apprentice of mine will steal from me and live. Wait, no! Grave of... created this cave would be much in demand among the Takan. The skull work is very pleasing.
at once. Fish. Sweat. Sulfur. You approach the flames that whisper clan with the stink of stalwart heavy upon you. You fill our halls with dreams of battle and bloodshed. <laughs> what right have cowards and agitators to protection? The villagers spy on our camps and spoil our hunts. They pick us off only to retreat behind their walls. Like a crack in the ice, they spread deeper into our lands with each waning moon. But we'll answer them blow for blow. Yet they come with weapons in hand, and mark their passage with the blood of my kind. Then their strength fails, so they send you to carve a path through the fallen keep. Of course it does! It's the diseased carcass of a ruined civilization. It festers with restless spirits and rotten magics. I see. Ugh. Dreams. Hailstones falling like cannonballs from the ramparts. A frozen gale screeching through the tower door. My dreams drove me to found this clan. Now my dreams tell me that Stalwart's ambition will destroy us. Mm. The dreams show me a heap of rubble atop their village. Yet why would they send you? The night winds whispered this name to me. They found us clubs and cannons ready. As for what we found on them, I have more trust in you than those villagers, or the next pack of fools they call here. I'll give you my blessing, and the remains of the last clods that passed through. Perhaps they found something of value to you. But you must keep Stalwart from harassing us further. Then take the bounty of your foolish predecessors. May it serve you better. You have the peace of flames that whisper. And my thanks for avoiding unnecessary violence to my clan. Morug can give you a place to rest, and access to our supplies. Speak to him at the mouth of the cave. I hope your skills are as fine as your words. It is rare that a matron betrays her dreams.